Hi everyone, Pastor John Fairchild here with another edition of the Real People of Lakeview. I'm excited to be able to bring to you some of the folks uh, at Lakeview and hear some of their story, what they've been doing, particularly in the period of uh, this isolation of the COVID virus and when we're separated but yet still trying to stay connected with one another. So I hope this is a great way for you to, to see one another and to uh, learn a little bit more about some of your friends in the church. And, well, I'm excited today uh, to welcome a couple of very wonderful people uh, who are summering up in uh, beautiful Minnesota. And yes. Al and Judy are just, uh, they're the kind of people that uh, I just love serving alongside because when they see a need, they jump in and just do it and it's just wonderful you guys are such a gift to uh, me as pastor at lakeview i'm really glad to welcome you and you've been watching youtube uh, during the summers at your summer yeah. place there in, in mm -hmm. minnesota for several years but it's a little different this year isn't it it definitely is it's good to see you yeah. we haven't yeah. seen you Hi. since uh, yeah. forever it seems like yeah. want to greet everybody that's watching yes hello, hello everybody absolutely thank you yeah i it's been what well we're entering our fourth month of not worshiping together but you have been watching for several years during the summer when yes. you've been in minnesota uh, it's a little different now because normally you get to see other people in the church on sunday don't you indeed yes we can i can be sure my ushers are doing what they're supposed to be doing that's right <laughs> And everybody's getting a break from all that kind of work, at least. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell me, what's it? You guys went up, you said, about uh, Memorial Day and mm -hmm. return. What's it been like for you back in Minnesota? And how are you doing? And how are you managing? Well, Minnesota is more locked down than it was in Arizona. And uh, we are about half the number of people as of today, which is, uh, I think, June 24th as we had in the hospital uh, when they reached their peak, which was at the uh, end of May. So that is a good thing. Uh, people wear masks all over the place. A lot of places require you to have a mask. And one thing we see is that if we go to a supermarket or another store, a lot of the folks over 50 just don't wear masks. But the other folks seem to be pretty good about uh, social distancing and wearing masks. And after all the crazy things that were happening in, in Minneapolis, uh, about the time we got there, uh, the news people said, well, you wait two weeks and Minnesota is going to go crazy and it's going to be the epicenter of the country. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, we have not had the numbers going up yet. They continue to go down. So that is a good thing. That is a good thing. Wow. And then when we, when we first got here, we have so much yard work to do. And so it wasn't hard for us to stick around the house for 14 days, you know, to try to do that. And then we'd have people drive by, by in their golf cars and stop and talk to us, of course, six feet away. So we had a chance to visit with people that way. Were you on a 14-day uh, quarantine when you got Well, there? just as much as we could. We did some shopping. Just self-quarantine. Yeah. For to, to okay. the sake of doing it since we felt it was the right thing to do. Okay. Well, good. Uh, so you, your health has been good, though. You Neither one of yes. you has gotten sick. Wonderful. No. That's good news to hear. And, no. and our prayer, too. Uh, Lakeview dispersed across the country right now, as the case is. Uh, so tell me, where, uh, what drew you to Lakeview when you first came to Sun City, and, and uh, what keeps you there? Well, I'll tell you what keeps us there, and it's uh, friendly folks. You know, Lakeview is the friendliest of all the churches around, in fact, the friendliest church we've ever gone to. And Judy can tell you how it happens to be that we got started coming to uh, Lakeview. Um, my mom and stepdad lived in Sun City, and they were longtime members of Lakeview. And so, of course, they invited us to come along whenever we were there on vacation. And then when we semi-retired in 2006, we started going on a regular basis. And, of course, um, everybody was so friendly, and my mom started taking me to circle meetings. And I was had an opportunity to meet a lot of wonderful women that were have been an inspiration to me since then mm. and um then at that time my mom had to sit in the same pew every week and so we got to know the people around us and um we got to know uh bob and barb lewis 
And at that time, Bob was the head usher. And of course, it didn't take him long to talk to us and ask us if we would be interested in uh, serving in that way. And so that's how we. Early, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing it ever since. Well, you know, that ushering, uh, some people think, well, that's just one of those jobs in the background, but it really isn't. It's, uh, it's that front person that when someone walks in the door, uh, what you're talking about, the friendliness, if you're not greeted by a friendly usher, mm -hmm. it's not a friendly church. Oh, for sure. What happens after that. So uh, that's such an important position and grateful for what you do there as you greet people and welcome them. It is well, a friendly you. church, though. Uh, people do kind of go out of their way to to find you and and get to know you a little bit, I think. Sure. You know, and as the head usher, I really emphasize that my crew be friendly, uh, that they be cordial, that they be helpful, and be genuine, you know. And uh, it really seems to work. And people that come to our church for the first time sometimes will, uh, or to a service, a memorial service, will talk to me afterwards and say, boy, you know, you've got the best ushers. And I said, all of our folks here at Lakeview are just super great. They're family. Once you used to come to Lakeview, Lakeview is your family. And we need that, don't we? Uh, yes, we do. Folks, when they retire, if they have kids, their kids are off and they're engaged in their life. And, mm -hmm. and we need that family environment to, to stay connected. Well, what have you been doing after you got the, the landscape under control? <laughs> what have you been doing for fun and, and to stay busy while you're there in Minnesota? Well, we've uh, still been able to visit with family. My son and granddaughter have been out to see us. And then last week we were able to uh, go and visit uh, Mandy and Adam and the two little kids. My family, my, yeah. my daughter and her family. Mm -hmm. So they were very happy to see us, and we had a lot of fun. They have a big yard, and we played a lot outside. Okay. And then here I'm the uh, volunteer marketing director for a community of 200 homes. And so I'm involved in listing homes. I uh, sell them. I mm, do the uh, online um, presentation of them, and I also do the closing. So that keeps me quite busy, sometimes much to the chagrin of Judy, who would rather have me around a little more. <laughs> I'll but I like to keep busy. Yeah. And then also during, I used to always, other years, I'd work remotely on Metho Travelers from here. And now that we're not doing any of that, so that gives me a little more free time. You know, that's a good time to mention Metho Travelers. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Metho Travelers, because we haven't covered that topic yet. Uh, and that's one of the social uh, traveling club that the church does. But talk a little bit about that. Sure, it's a definitely a social ministry, and we have day trips that we go on. We have uh, overnight trips, and we do cruises. And it's a good chance for folks to get together. We have a lot of folks that come that otherwise probably wouldn't go to see those places because we do all the driving. It's pretty much uh, we do everything for the folks. And my responsibilities are with mostly doing uh, working on cruises, whether here in Minnesota or there at our office in the church or from home uh, when I'm in Arizona. And I also do an occasional day trip. But we try to do about four cruises normally a year. We also have quite a few day trips always going on. Super. Uh, I've noticed, uh, get back where we're both together there. Yeah. Uh, I've noticed that, uh, uh, of course, with Metho Travelers, it's not just Lakeview. Uh, but we have right. uh, Willowbrook and Royal Oaks. And uh, First Church. Sun City First is the other partner, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So the four partners. And we just I just found out um, that uh, uh, Daryl and uh, Dorothy uh, Ho were able to get Royal Oaks to start broadcasting our Sunday morning service. Oh, great. Internal TV. So there's another uh, great opportunity for people to, to be exposed to, to Lakeview, and, and especially mm -hmm. those yeah. who maybe been on a trip to see what, what else we do. Mm -hmm. So that's been uh, kind of a trip too. Well, I got to go on the, at last September, Valerie and I went up to uh, New England on the cruise and uh, Canada, New England. We really enjoyed that. That was a great trip. So I look forward to the time when trips can start up again. <laughs> yes. 
And for uh, we usually work with Princess Cruises as far as the cruises go, and because we are one of their top bookers in the nation, because we go on so many cruises and have so, such large groups, and so they usually give us a pretty good deal, and we're able to pass that on to the folks. Um, plus, even with the day trips and the overnight trips, they're always getting a very good bargain. They couldn't go on this trip with any other group any cheaper. And it still enables us at the end of the year as Metho Travelers to be able to go and make a generous contribution with any profits we would have uh, to the four church, to the three churches. Yeah, yeah that's been a, a huge benefit to uh, the church to be able to take those funds and use those in ministry and a good byproduct of of good social activity and getting to travel and have fun. Mm -hmm. So Judy, you've been able to do something new this summer by staying uh, connected with uh, at least one of the Bible studies, I think. Is it yes. just one? It's just one at this time. Um, I'm attending the one on Tuesday mornings with uh, Jim and Carol Smith ah. through Zoom, through Zoom. So that's okay. really nice because you can see all the people that attend and have that fellowship with them and it's, it's a more closeness you know together when you can see them it's just hearing them yeah so it's been uh wonderful for me to to keep in touch in that way good what are your favorite ministries at the church well i've uh served on a couple of boards um i was uh treasurer for a while for the um dell circle for umw and now i'm on the board with umw and um, I just completed my training with Stevens Ministry. So that's, I'm looking forward to doing more in that area. Yeah, our Stephen Ministry, of course, that's not a United Methodist ministry, but it's, a, it's this caring ministry of listening and being present with people and sometimes some practical help. Uh, and so you just finished that training, graduated in April, was it? No, it was is, when was that, February? No, uh, they had a couple of sessions um, by phone in March That's right. you know, to complete it. So mm -hmm. we, we really mm -hmm. haven't had a consecration for, the, for no. you and the other New Stephen ministries yet. Mm -hmm. Ugh, we got to get everybody back together again. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to the fellowship, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And getting back with our church family. Good. You know, the Zoom has opened up this. I think that's one of the good things about what's happened is that we've been able to open some new technology opportunities like this. Mm -hmm. And then um, the, the Zoom meetings where we have Bible studies ongoing. Um, Pastor Linda's teaching a new one on prayer on Mondays uh, that's been going for a few weeks now. So uh, I'm excited about those things. I think that's probably one of the positives that have come out of this time mm -hmm. yeah well good also judy you went on the walk to emmaus last year that was a wonderful experience and i want to thank you for representing me and and sally and and betty um i'm very grateful to you for that experience um i don't know if anybody's ever heard of this saying a mountaintop experience but that definitely was one for me and um, it, it literally just changed my life. And it was such a positive way for me to um, all improve my walk with, with, with Christ. I know we're having some noise here. I don't know if it's, okay. It might be on my end. I'll get a little noise in the background there. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, uh, I, I call the Emmaus experience of three three days with Jesus. Mm -hmm. and, That's exactly. Uh, Everything's and, on yeah. Jesus' time. Yep. And, <laughs> uh, so it's a really unique opportunity for a three-day uh, experience. I've been blessed to serve as the Arizona uh, spiritual director for the past, uh, coming up on three years now. So uh, I've been blessed to be a part of that organization since 1999 and uh, again that's an ecumenical uh, organization as well just like the Stephen ministry so uh, we're open to other denominations and and people coming in and, and experiencing that wonderful retreat mm -hmm. wonderful well what else is on your heart today have any favorite uh, 
any verses that come to mind for either of you that really inspire you or uh, words of wisdom for the church or encouragement for people who are stuck at home? <laughs> well, just know that this, this too will end and someday we'll be together again. And so everybody needs to look forward to that. And just knowing that they're not alone because they have God right next to them. And all they have to do is reach out to someone from our church and we'll be right there to help you, whatever the need might be. And we're so thankful for, yes, and we're so thankful for these online services and the Zoom Bible studies and everything else that you're doing. And we definitely want to take a second to just thank you and the other pastors and Priscilla, Glade, Pat, everybody that's involved to make these possible for us so we can still keep connected with our church family. Well, it's our honor and privilege to be able to do that. I'll tell you, uh, it, it is really is a honor to serve at Lakeview and a privilege. So I'm grateful to be there. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to your return in the fall. And uh, Lord willing, we'll be, by the time you get back, we'll be back together worshiping again. And it'll be time to go back to work greeting those people as you usher new people into the church. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. And I'm going to send you backstage for just a minute. And uh, thank you very much for coming on and being, being my guinea pig. Pigs for <laughs> okay. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. We'll see you Absolutely. in September. Yes. God September. Bless. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah, you well, thank you all very much for joining us today with Al and Judy. They're wonderful people and a perfect example of the friendliness and the welcome you receive. And, and what a witness to some of the ministries that are going on at the church and opportunities to serve and be a part of uh, this body of Christ. So uh, thank you again for joining us. God bless. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.